الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم Again, the meaning of the ayah is the same that this is our theme ayah from the last couple of months that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who has a better way than the, than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we indeed have submitted as the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah, we have now come all the way to ayah number 188. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah lays a foundation, a very beautiful foundation for society. A foundation that has justice and a just behavior. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts out this ayah with the words, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِي do not consume each other's money and other resources on wrong grounds. You have to establish fair trade. Then you can start having some kind of trade between each other. But going out of the way and consuming resources and other monetary values of other people unjustly is completely prohibited. forbidden. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the social justice system to the entire society by saying, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ And do not go buttering up the people above you and start doing things unjustly. So in short saying, do not start a corrupt society. Do not do corruption in the society. Corruption in the society is something that will eat up your whole social system. وَتُدْلُوا بِهَا إِلَى الْحُكَّامِ لِتَأْكُلُوا فَرِيقًا مِنْ أَمْوَالِ النَّاسِ بِالْإِثْمِ So that you can just go out and butter up the people above you so that you can do injustice. Now if you look at the corrupt societies, mostly what happens, the guy on top is aware of what's happening underneath. And he gets a percentage out of that corruption. Everybody receives a portion of the percentage. So everybody is quiet. It's a hush money. And it's pyramid. In this pyramid, the guy who is sitting all the, all the way at the top is getting small amounts from many sources. And as a result, everybody is feeding into the system. Now, somebody who wants to get into the system, then they say, okay, if you pay this much amount, I'm going to give you a job. So they pay this much amount to get a job, and that amount gets distributed all the way through. Then that guy who has paid such a big amount to get to that position will now start taking money from people out of norm because he has to make up for that loss. On top of that, he has taken up that position for profit, not for a salary. And this number keeps increasing over the period of time and a corruption cre creeps into the society. And a lot of us who visit places back home, we are aware of this corruption that has corrupted into the society because things don't happen normally. If you go out to a government office, and let's say if you had to pay them 170 bucks, and you pay them 200 bucks, it is the understanding that they will not going to give you back your change. It's an understanding. If you ask for a change, then they get mad at you and they delay your process. They will put charges on you. And then if you go out to fight for those charges, it's going to take you months and nothing will be done. So this kind of society is totally discouraged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the ummah, especially the Muslims, that you have to establish fair grounds. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And you know it when you're doing it. It's just not like you don't know. You know what you're doing. If you fool yourself, that's a totally different deal. But you know what you're doing. And then when it comes to spending the money, first of all, your income must come from halal sources, from right sources. And when it is time to spend, وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ 
then you must spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talked about last time when we were here, that they have been spread out. Starting from your own family, your relatives, the people that you may know, and extending out to the neighborhood, maybe to the town, then going further at the state level, county level, going further at national level, international level. The problem comes in when people forget about where they live, but they start supporting thousands of miles away. And the people where they're living, there are people who are dying hungry, there are people who are without shelter, yet they're busy supporting people who are thousands of miles away. But Quran doesn't lay out that foundation for us. Quran has a different foundation for us. Quran starts out closer to farther, not farther to closer. So, وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَأَحْسِنُوا And be good and do good. There's no boundaries to goodness. There's no boundaries to goodness. Now that reminds me of the story that happened at the time of Hassan radiallahu anhu. Then Muawiyah radiallahu anhu sent him a big chunk of money. And the guy who brought him the money, he was asked to sit there and observe what Hassan does to this money. Hassan upon receiving such a big load of money, who's the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and got charity in inheritance in genes, started giving that money out to the poor until all the money was done with. And then, when this news was told to Muawiyah, he sent out a letter to Hassan. And the letter said, لا إسراف في الدين There's no overspending in the religion. And the Hassan made a slight amendment to it and sent it back. That لا إسراف في الخير There's no overspending when it is a matter of goodness. Because there are needs of people. Some people keep their needs above themselves. Some people keep it at themselves. Some people keep it after themselves. But the goodness is something that needs to spread. In another ayah, ayah number 206, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And then there are people. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ Then there are people who commit sins. And they are menace to the society. When you approach them and you tell them, Fear Allah, what are you doing? You're causing harm for yourself and you're causing harm to the society. They take pride in their sin. And they said, they don't back off from it. And this is not a behavior of a believer. Unfortunately, some believers also depict this behavior. That when you ask them, when you tell them, when you advise them, brother, this is sin, sister, this is sin, don't do it. They get personal about it. Instead of thinking about, pondering over, improving themselves, they get confrontational. They start disliking you. To th- you, you are a critique. And then they say, brother, look at yourself. Don't tell me what to do or not to do. We know it better. So this is the stance of a disbeliever. That's what Abu Jahl did. That's what Abu Lahab did. Udba did. Shayba did. This is what Ibn Salul did. But a believer doesn't do that. A believer, when it showed the right thing, he said, oh, thank you. He doesn't get confrontational about it. In ayah number 208, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, those of you who have believed, udkhulu fi silmi kafa, enter the religion in completeness. You do not have the right to pick and choose other than the right given to you to pick and choose from. Outside of what rights have been given to you, you cannot make the laws of halal and haram yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given everything to you. Al-halal bayyinun wa haram bayyinun. Everything is open. So do not try to make your ways to satisfy your nafs. Udkhulu fi silmi kafa. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ 
Do not fall in the traps of the shaitan. Innahu lakum aduwum mubin. He is your open enemy. Now, khutwat is shaitan is a very important subject. Ulama have written books on it. How does the khutwat of shaitan start? There is a terminology we use when we talk about the stages of nafs. The terminology is called khatar. Khatar, khatar. Hafid nafsaka ala kulli khatar. Khatar is the very, very first thing that emerges in your heart. That's where you have to nip it if it's evil. If you let the khatar go, then it can take the form of ham or irada or niya and amal. So it is the khatar that you need to go after. Otherwise, it starts recurring and recurring and recurring and becomes so strong, it's hard to fight with. So kill the evil in the bit, in the bud. It's basically you have to nip it out at that, that, that time. So that's why you have to be careful of his khutuwat, his traps. Innahu lakum adubun mubin. In ayah number 215, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Prophet, they ask you, yes, alunaka, ماذا ينفقون? What should we spend? قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ Whatever you can. Out of whatever is left over. Anyway, everything has been given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but His mercy says, whatever you can, spare. And remember, this is the sequence. لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ Starts with parents. Now, unfortunately, some people don't take care of their parents, but go out and take care of other people out on the street, in the communities, in the world. But their parents are deprived. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, they have more right over you than anybody else. Maybe your brothers, your own family, of course, your wife, your kids, a little bit extended, your siblings, their family maybe if they are in the hours of need, then going out to other relatives, and then farther and farther and farther away, what aqrabin comes next? Then wal yatama, the orphans, the general orphans. Well, masakin, general needy people. Witness sabil and anybody who is in, in, in need of that money, who is in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Whatever you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing. And this is a beautiful ayah, the next ayah that I'm about to share with you. This shapes your whole thought process. Why does it shape our whole thought process? Because there are two kinds of things that happen in this life. Things that make you happy and things that make you sad. Things that make you happy, it is quite possible that happiness has an evil in it. If you ask a thief, after committing a crime, if it's successful, he's happy. That happiness is not good happiness. At the same time, there's a guy who is sad. He's sad because he committed a sin. Now that sadness is good sadness. Now sometimes what happens, things happen in life which make us sad, which make us depressed. But then there is some khayr in them. And then there are things that happen to us which apparently look khayr. But there, there is no khayr in them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Something may happen to you that you don't really like on its face value, but there's something good in it for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ There are things that you may like, but there's, there's no good in it. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He knows you don't. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ Do you think he would not know who created you? So he knows what to give you, when to give you, how much to give you, how to give you. He knows you. Some people are not given because if they're given, they will going to be corrupted. Some people are given because if they're not given, they are corrupted. Some people are kept in the middle. They're in the struggling, going up and down phases of life. If they're not in that situation, they will get corrupted. So he gives... That reminds me of a very beautiful story from the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
It took over 55 years for this story to complete. When Prophet Muhammad wasallam was born, he went in a nearby tribe around Ta'if, the tribe of Sa'diya, Banu Sa'd, where for Halima Sa'diya was from. She took him over there, he was a little baby, she nursed him. She had an older daughter named Shayma. He used to take care of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. When he was a little boy, you know when the boy had teething? So maybe around that time, he might have taken a little bite here on her shoulder that left a little mark. Of course, she might have been in a lot of pain at that time. But the mark stayed there. It didn't go away. 55 plus years passed. And then the Prophet Muhammad went in the battle in Hunayn. And after the battle of Hunayn, the battle of Ta'if happened. After that, all the war booties was getting distributed. And a woman came. And she was asking for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aina Muhammadin, Aina Muhammadin. And the companions brought this woman to the Prophet. An old woman, probably maybe touching her 70s. And she said to the Prophet, Do you remember me? He said, Who are you? He hadn't seen her in over 55 years or 50 years. He said, I'm Shayma, the daughter of Halima. He said, wow. He said, do you still have that sign on your head? He remembered. And she showed him that sign. And that sign became a letter of freedom for 6,000 people. Little thing that happened when she was a child... He was a child, became a sign as a letter of freedom for 6,000 people. And he said to the Shema, what do you want? She said, I want the freedom of all my people. And she took all 6,000 of them with her. So this is the beauty of life. Sometimes see little things happen in life. But the beauty is hidden within him, which we don't understand. And the times to come tells the beauty of it. Apparently Khidr alayhi salam broke a little board out of the little ship or little boat that he was traveling in. And the Moses said, what did you do? He said, didn't I ask you to? Don't ask me any questions. But when later on he revealed, he said, if I would not have done that, there was a king ahead. He would have snatched his boat from them because it was in good shape. I made some errors in it. So that he doesn't snatch it and say, ah, this is not a good boat. And they would still continue to get their earnings. Because the problem was fixable with minimum amount. But apparently it looked bad. So, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays this foundation for us and says, Wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'lam. When you don't know, you only know a little bit. وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا إِلَّا قَلِيلًا What do you know? Nothing. What can you create? Nothing. Whatever you create is what Allah has already given to you. Because He is the one who is the creator. We just use the things and modify them and create something else out of it. Think for a moment, if there was no hadith, there's no iron in the world, where will this world be if there was no iron? It will be a very different place. Very different place. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this from the skies. And gave us an entire chapter in the Quran called Al-Hadid. So that the people... We'll be like, oh my God, this is important stuff. But unfortunately, the ummah has stopped thinking. And they are going after some craziness, which is so short-lived and causes a big rift. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this book to be learned from. This is not a book of science. 
This is not a book of geography. This is not a book of history. It is the book of guidance. And whenever you come across something, you must look back at this book and say, okay, if it is okay by this book or not. The other day somebody asked me, what do you think about all these scientists finding uh, these human-like species like Neanderthals Neanderthals that, that existed on this land before us? What do you think? I said, subhanallah. He said, what do you mean? I said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to create a creation before Adam, subhanallah. What's the big mess about it? We don't believe that Adam came from them. But if he decided to create something, subhanallah. He showed that I created something like you. But that's okay, you're still better. So why are you worrying about worst? He said, what about dinosaurs? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet told us that I created the makruhat, the, 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 the things that you have, uh, you don't look good towards like reptiles and wuhush, the haywanat, before the humans. But he didn't tell what kind. He might have created it. Who knows? وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا He's giving you just a little bit of knowledge. That's it. If you have found something, subhanallah, he has shown you what I have created for you. Now remember, this little statement Malaika said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I am planning on putting Adam on this planet earth as the next Khalifa. And they said, أَتَجَعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُوا and he will cause bloodshed. How did they know? Jinns don't cause bloodshed. It's quite possible there might have been beings before Adam that might have been human-like, that had might have had human-like behaviors, who might have caused bloodshed, that they were referring to. Wallahu a'lamu bis-sawab. So there's nothing to worry about as a believer. As a believer, you look back at the Qur'an and says, no, this is my principle by which I live. If anything follows this principle, well and good. It doesn't follow this principle, then I may have to look into it. There must be a reason behind. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ